Hey guys, welcome to Antwerp, Belgium actually today. We're here at the BMW Hydrogen Innovation Days. I'm here with Jürgen. Um, you're in charge of the hydrogen development at BMW. We spoke last year, we were together in Sweden and I had a chance to drive the iX5 hydrogen. But today it's kind of the repeat of all of that. But before we do that, um, Jürgen, how about we can explain people what a um, you know fuel cell electric vehicle looks like, maybe they drive them like underneath, and we have something to show them here, and then we can talk about some other things, you know, specs and all of that. So I'm gonna let you have the floor and kind of walk me through what we have here. So welcome back, nice to see you again. You too. Um, I'm glad you enjoyed our drive in. It was spectacular. Sweden and came back for it. So now we finally have a chance to see the drivetrain, what it looks like, because exactly. we're looking, we, you we saw the car, car. exactly. Now we can see the drivetrain. Now we're talking about a hydrogen vehicle, which is an electric vehicle. Okay. It drives electrically with all the advantages of electric drive. The silent ride, the wonderful acceleration, okay. as you will experience in the car. Sure. The only difference is the energy is stored in terms of hydrogen. And okay. Hydrogen is located here in these tanks. They're in the middle of the vehicle, we have two tanks. They hold about six kilograms of hydrogen, which, which gives us a range of 500 kilometers or 300 miles. Okay. This hydrogen is then converted into electricity and water. The water being kind of the exhaust sure. in this system here that's called the fuel cell. Now, if you want to go into the details, how this works. Sure, absolutely. We're gonna go step by step. Okay. We're pulling in air from the outside, getting it through an air filter and into a compressor down here. This is an electric compressor. It's like a, a turbo. And this electric compressor now boosts the air into the fuel cell stack. So that's the fuel cell stack right that's, there, basically. That's the fuel cell stack. That's where the cells are, there's uh, several hundred of the so-called fuel cells. Okay. And in these fuel cells, the chemical reaction happens in a very controlled manner. Now, we get the hydrogen from the tank, the air, which contains oxygen. Okay. And we have in those cells a membrane where we have a catalyst layer. This catalyst layer splits up the hydrogen into its proton, the H plus for the chemist and an electron. Okay. And this electron then is used to drive the car. And after driving the car, it comes back on the other side and joins an oxygen molecule, which then becomes an ion. And then we have the hydrogen coming through a membrane, joining this oxygen to form water. And okay. the water is really the only thing we produce as a side product. Okay. Very clean water coming out through the exhaust pipeline. Okay, so now if we look right here, maybe we can point those to a few things. So for example, what would this part be? This would be? be the air intake. Okay, so that's the air so intake. So the air comes in through here and then goes through the air filter down here into the compressor. Okay, perfect. And you also have a high voltage. The compressor is a high voltage because okay. it's, it's a turbine run with an electric motor. Okay. Then we here we have a humidifier um, such that the air is cooled and has the right humidity. Okay and then the air goes in through the intake manifold on this side. And as you can see, all those components are very similar to combustion engine components. Okay. You know, and that's why the uh, traditional supplier industry is really hot on these components because they know what to do with it. And this is how you feed the hydrogen into? Yeah, the hydrogen comes in through the pipe back here. Okay. You can see this, this little pipe. This little pipe brings in the hydrogen and then it meets the uh, oxygen in the fuel cells. Now the electricity then goes through a DC-DC converter. You kind of have to go underneath and see this down here is the DC-DC converter. And we also have a cooling system that kind of runs between the, uh, the fuel cells, mm -hmm. it cools the system. The cool thing is we can use the excess heat to heat up the car in winter so we don't lose any range in winter. We have the same range in winter as you can actually could experience in Sweden. In Aria plug, yeah, it was in quite cold. Already. Mm -hmm. Orange pipes? Orange pipes are now the electricity lines, okay. basically, going from the DC-DC converter all the way back to the electric motor. The electric motor is the same electric motor we have on our iX electric vehicle. Sure. With the same axle. And on top of it, we have a power battery. 
As you can see, it's very small. It's much, much smaller than the battery of a battery electric vehicle, but it has cells that are tuned for power. So what is it used for? Gives additional acceleration. Okay, just so talking like numbers. an e-boost kind of thing? Yeah, like an e-boost. Okay. Just talking numbers, the fuel cell system produces 125 kilowatts of electric power. Mm -hmm. That is used continuously for high speed, all kinds of operations sure. going up and down mountains. And the battery adds another 170 kilowatt of power. So we almost have 300 kilowatts total power. That's 400 horsepower, okay. gives great acceleration. The battery also is used to regenerate electricity when we're braking. Mm -hmm. The electric motor then acts as a generator, so no energy is lost. We generate electricity and put it into the battery. So what's the capacity? Um, very small side. capacity, okay. because we don't need much capacity, we need power. And that's why okay. we have special cells that we develop together with the supplier to have really high power, we don't need much capacity. The operating system is like a hybrid system. Okay. You know, the fuel cell is the engine, mm -hmm. it's driving the car, it also follows the foot. Sure. It follows the accelerator, mm -hmm. gives you instant power, and the battery adds what you need to accelerate. So in other terms also, this one also acts as a more of a state of charge kind of battery, right? So kind of holds a state of charge and it never de fully depletes, yes, right? Exactly. So you can always regenerate it by braking and exactly. driving yes. conditions yes. as well. When the fuel cell is not busy driving the car, we recharge the battery and then we always have the full power available. Okay. Exactly. So now one question that I always see when it comes to BEV versus a fuel cell electric vehicle, I mean, and it's worth saying that, the, that a fuel cell vehicle is still an electric vehicle in some ways. What are some of the advantages of using you know, fuel cell vehicles versus BEV? The main advantage is you have a car that is electric drive with all its advantages that we already talked about that you can use as you're used to using cars today. You go to a gas station, gas up in three to five minutes and you're done. Okay. You can keep going. You don't have to plan your life around an electric charging. I mean, battery electric cars are great. And as BMW, we have put out great battery electric cars. And everybody who can use one, you know, because they have charging at home, for example, mm -hmm. it's really a great technology. Okay. But there will be people who have trouble with battery electric cars. And that's why we think we need a second technology to be able to fulfill the customer needs of 100% of our customers. Okay, perfect. So you said about 500 kilometers on a WLTP. Uh, that would be the range basically and exactly. I guess to explain people how it really works those two tanks they're really about six gram uh, six, six kilograms, six, six kilograms yes. each and that's how you get to the 500 big uh, you know uh, range because it's all based on that versus you know when you have a battery uh, cell we have capacity or you have right. like a fuel tank which is you know 12 14 gallons yeah. so very the, interesting. the range of the car is really dependent on the size of the tanks okay. and the power of the car depends on the fuel cell that's the continuous power and the battery size the battery power actually more than its size the battery power and the fuel cell power they kind of determine it okay. um, this is the most powerful fuel cell system that there is for passenger vehicles okay. so final question for you again because of course hydrogen gets a reputation of not always being safe. What are some of the safety measures that you have to put in place in order to incorporate this drivetrain into a BMW car? Obviously, safety is a major concern for us. And we started the development with putting all the safety features in place. We did all the crash tests that are required just before we even started driving the cars. Um, the tanks, in addition, had to go through extensive testing by themselves as components. Um, there's a certification process for that, so that's standardized all over the world. Plus we have um, like a special fire coating on it, and we also have release valves. You can see them, uh, for example, here. These are not just the, the valves where we take out the hydrogen, but they also have a release valve that, in case of a fire that, you know, for whatever reason, um, it started somewhere else, um, maybe by a neighboring car, for example, these release valves open and the hydrogen gets released before there's any, any danger. So we went through all the safety features um, extensively to make sure that this is a very safe system. How thick are the walls on those tanks? Are they quite thick? They're carbon fiber. They're, okay. they're about uh, this thick, okay. I would say. Um, the carbon fiber 
kind of and holds a um, plastic liner. Mm -hmm. That liner is responsible for the uh, uh, making sure that no hydrogen escapes those tanks. Um, there has been, you know, in old technologies where we had liquid hydrogen, we had to release hydrogen when the liquid hydrogen warmed up and was um, the, the pressure in the tanks was getting too high. These tanks are really not releasing any hydrogen at any time, so it's a very safe system. Jurgen, thank you so much. I guess now it's time for the fun part to go drive the car. Let's so go we'll for catch the ride. up. Perfect. Thanks again. Appreciate it. You're welcome.